knew that they had did something wrong. They knew that the way they treated me was not right. Tonight, two women in tears, one the victim of a botched police raid. The other, the mayor, who finally admits she let her down. It's been painful and upsetting. It's not okay. This man who's walking up to me and putting me in handcuffs, and I have no clothes on. Now, after nearly a two-year court battle to bury the body cam video, a battle waged by the mayor's office, that mayor out with a new promise to all of Chicago. We will do better, and we will win back the trust that we have lost this week. Good evening. Unprecedented movement today in the story CBS2 investigator Dave Savini first broke. Mayor Lori Lightfoot calling a news conference to make a series of stunning admissions and propose sweeping cultural changes within the Chicago Police Department, even a proposal to change state law. This is My Name is Anjanette Young, a CBS2 investigator's special presentation. We are going to spend the next hour without commercials looking at a systemic problem within CPD. Shoddy police work leading officers to bust down wrong door after wrong door, traumatizing innocent families. Let's start with the about face at City Hall. The admission the mayor knew about Anjanette's story a year ago, despite her claims yesterday that she didn't. Since I spoke yesterday, I have now become aware that in November of 19, when CBS was doing a continued reporting on the series of search warrant cases, um, some of the reporting included, I think you mentioned this yesterday, Dana, Miss Young's case. Um, I knew generally about the reporting, which is what prompted me to have our chief risk officer um, get involved to reform the search warrant process, but I've now come to learn that um, in November of 19, this Ms. Young's case and others were lifted up to my attention. The mayor was told about it. She knew about it. Later on, she said she may have been busy, distracted with the budget. We want to bring in CBS2 investigator Dave Savini. Dave, this story now getting attention across the globe. You sat down with the mayor one-on-one -on -one after that explosive news conference. I'd love to start with your first impressions of that meeting. Well, Brad and Marie, we've been asking for this interview ever since the mayor took office. We wanted to talk to her about this disturbing pattern of wrong raids we had been uncovering in the city. We wanted to talk to her about the victims. We never got that interview. We asked repeatedly and never got it. Well, we got it now, and it took Ann Jeanette Young's worldwide exposure of the humiliation to that woman during that botched raid for her to finally sit down with us. We interviewed a very uh, tired mayor. She appeared to be tired. She appeared to be very angry, and she said she was very angry. And you're going to hear the questions that I had for her throughout this hour, and you're going to hear the answers that she gives me. Okay, Dave, thank you so much. We're going to hear more from you and from that interview throughout this hour. First, though, we do want to go back a bit. The extraordinary events of today started with the courage and determination of Anjanette Young to fight for video of her mistaken raid and to tell her story. For more perspective about our conversation tonight, we want to show you her terrifying ordeal. I had just gotten home from work. And while I was undressing in my bedroom, it was a cold February night, and Anjanette Young, a social worker, had just finished her shift at the hospital. You see them running up to the apartment complex <laughs> with the battering ram in their hand, Chicago police search warrant. a crowbar. It was so traumatic to hear the way the thing was hitting the door. And it happened so fast, I didn't have time to put on clothes. And suddenly, she found herself frozen in fear, completely naked, in a room full of men. Nine body cameras rolling. And you're just standing there. And I'm just standing there. I mean, terrified, humiliated, not even understanding why in that moment that this is happening to me. And the first thing police reach for is not clothing, it's handcuffs. There were big guns and guns with lights and scopes on them and they were yelling at me, you know, put your hands up, put your hands up. What are you thinking right now? 
I just remember, you know, being so afraid. It's one of those moments where I just felt like that I could have died that night. If I had made one wrong move, I felt like they would have shot me. I truly believe that they would have shot me. A police officer wraps a short coat around her shoulder, still leaving her front fully exposed. Even the sergeant in charge of the raid just stands there talking to her while she has nothing covering her. Then she gets a blanket. They just threw something over me. And my hands are behind my back and I'm handcuffed. So there was no way for me to secure the blanket that they put around me. But the blanket just keeps sliding open. More humiliation. You need to tell me what you're looking for. What are you looking for? You can see how some officers just stand there until this one wearing a mask sees what's happening and goes and holds it in place. It felt like forever for me. It felt like forever. Oh my God, this cannot be right. How is this legal? Listen how she repeatedly tells the raid team they were in the wrong place. You got the wrong house. We count it. She says it at least 43 times. You got the wrong house. And she was right. They were in the wrong house. Our investigation uncovered police failed to do the most basic research before getting the search warrant approved. We found they simply took the word of an informant who gave them Anjanette Young's address. The informant claimed a 23-year-old man who was a known felon had a gun and ammo inside. Then, during the raid, something happens. Watch as two of the officers go to their squad car and begin reviewing their notes about the warrant. CPD would not comment on what you're about to hear the officers saying a few minutes later. It wasn't initially approved or some crap. What does that mean? I have no idea, because, I mean, they told him it was approved, and then I guess that person messed up on their end. Messed up is an understatement. So where was the target? Our investigation revealed he was awaiting trial on home confinement here at a different apartment in Anjanette Young's complex. How easy would it have been to locate him? Easy, real easy, because he was wearing a police tracking device, an electronic monitoring bracelet. It's possible he could have even heard the raid happening because records show he was confined to the unit right next door. But I'm telling you it's wrong. I'm telling you, asking you to let me call somebody. I'm asking you to let me put some clothes on. I'll sit here and let you do whatever you need to do. But let me call somebody, let me call an attorney, because I'm telling you this is wrong. I have nothing to do with whoever this person is you're looking for. We found if they would have done a little bit more research, they might have found where the target actually lived. Yes. I think screw up was being too kind because ultimately this is a constitutional rights issue. Keenan so, Salter is Anjanette Young's attorney and is suing the police department. If this had been a young woman uh, in Lincoln Park by herself in her home, naked, a young white woman, let's just be frank, if the reaction would have been the same. I don't think it would have been. I think they would have saw that woman, rightfully so, as someone who was vulnerable, someone who deserved protection, someone who deserved to have their dignity maintained. They viewed Ms. Young as less than human. They did eventually walk her to a room to remove the handcuffs so she could get dressed, but then put them right back on and kept questioning her. At this point, the sergeant in charge of the raid tells the officer who got the warrant to step outside. Let's go talk outside. But you won't hear it because once outside, the body camera is shut off. 
Back inside Anjanette's home, another officer finally uncuffs her. She had been bound for 20 minutes. Listen as the sergeant returns with a new message. We believe your story. And you can see him trying to fix the door they busted so she could close it and lock it. But it was too damaged to repair, so watch as they try to find something to wedge it shut. They settle on an ironing board. Surreal. Surreal. It's almost like a bad movie. When I watch this, I feel like I'm watching a movie. But those are no actors. I'm no actor. This is my real life. And it happened to me. They're adding trauma to people's lives that will be with them for the rest of their lives. The work is warranted. They need to do the work, but they need to do it right. They can't just callously do it and leave people's lives in ruins because they got it wrong. It did indeed. Such a visceral reaction here in Chicago and across the country to seeing with our own eyes what happened to Anjanette Young. And Dave, that really is at the crux of everything in this story. Seeing that video, it's almost impossible to not feel the emotions yourself as you're watching Anjanette so raw and so vulnerable. Anyone who watches this, it's like a punch in the gut to humanity watching this. You can't sit there and watch a person be treated this way without respect and humiliated by other human beings. And you just can't believe it's happening in, in this country, in this world today. And being in the room with Anjanette while she watched herself on that camera, I'll never see anything like that again. Mm. Seeing a person watching herself be treated that way, a, a very strong, compassionate woman who, who's, who never expected this to happen, in her own home, getting into her PJs, after a long day of work of being a social worker, dealing with people with traumas, and this is what she's met with on the night that she goes home to relax. And then had to deal with this burden and carry it for two years as the city rejected every effort she made to get it. A question I have, though, I mean, it really does look like Hollywood. She says it looks like Hollywood. I mean, it looks like these guys were coming in to break up the Medellin cartel. Dozen officers, guns drawn, scopes. What again were they looking for? They were looking for what an informant told them was a guy with a gun and some ammo, a convicted felon, <clears throat> a, convicted felon a guy with a past. Uh, they took the word of an informant who they didn't check out the story. You know, as I said, if they would have done a little digging, they would have found the guy in minutes. We found him right next door with a bracelet on. These are simple police duties that they have, responsibilities that they have to perform to get search warrants right to protect the rights of the people of the city of Chicago anywhere. If you're watching this and you're a police officer anywhere, you know you've got to do this work to protect the innocent. We talked about how impactful that video was, which makes what happened next at the 11th hour that much more disturbing. After very careful vetting and tedious work to blur that body cam video and protect it as much as possible. Yeah, we were mere hours away from airing our investigation Monday night. 10 p.m. when the city law department filed a motion in federal court to try to stop the story. Dave? Yeah, the um, city law department uh, threw a bombshell at us at the last minute. We, we didn't expect it. We had been airing the promo. We've been questioning them about, about the, the body cameras and then uh, in the city about them and the police department. And then all of a sudden, at the, at, uh, just before the story is going to air, we find out they've gone to court to try to stop CBS2 from airing the video of Anjanette Young's treatment. It just goes to show you how far they went to try to cover this up. Those videos, those body cameras, have existed while you've been mayor, mm -hmm. in the hands of your administration, somewhere in the law department, police departments had it. Uh, we don't even know who's seen it, uh, but it's been here. Mm -hmm. And you know what your reaction was when you saw it with your mm -hmm. the first moment, mm -hmm. that gut, what you felt in your gut. Oh. Yeah. So you know people saw this video in your administration. Mm -hmm. Does that make you wonder why you didn't know about it? No, it makes me angry that I didn't know about it. It makes me angry that um, decisive action wasn't taken the minute that it was seen by other people. That's what it makes me. I, I, I have said to many people over the course of this week, including today, to members of the law department, we can't lose sight of the humanity of people who say um, and, and bring to us um, harm that they um, believe was committed by a city actor. Regardless of 
which side of the V you're on, plaintiff or defendant, if you get to a point where you lose sight of the fact that this person is a human being entitled to dignity and respect, then it's time for you to go. People in your administration. Correct. People I, that you trust. Correct. Well, people in my administration saw this. Whether it's police department, law department, COPA, I saw the, the video and someone should have acted. Someone should have certainly raised it to my level. Look at this video. Um, and that didn't happen. So Dave, we heard the mayor earlier today apologize for how this has been handled, saying that she knew she lost trust from people for how this went down. But you've got to think that she maybe is looking around at who she's trusting in her leadership team as she's realized that this information got to her in a haphazard manner. And now we have this fallout to deal with. Exactly. When you heard my question to her about people you trust, did you notice that she didn't answer that? Mm -hmm. She didn't say they were people I trusted. She did say they were people in her administration, which is a big red flag right there. She's very angry that she says that she was not told about it, that this was kept from her, or she may possibly was insulated. Um, she's not happy about how this all went down, and she says she's doing a top-to-bottom review on who saw the video, whose hands it might have gotten into. I asked her, did you keep a log? Do you, do you, do you even know who had access to this video? Who, who watched it? Anyone. Was it in the police department? Was it in the law department? Who saw this? She doesn't know. She's going to look into that. Yeah, and l let's not forget, though, while she may be trying to win the Empathy Olympics today, she knew about this Tuesday, she knew about this Wednesday, we saw very different sides of the mayor in the past two days. And today we saw a very emotional, empathic one. That one didn't exist a couple days ago. So, so one needs to think about that too. This is one of the big changes though Mayor Lightfoot promised this afternoon because of our reporting. This wrangling over video, the back and forth, should we release it, should we not? Lightfoot says she's making an immediate policy change so victims will no longer have to fight for their own body camera video. Anytime a person who's a victim requests information about an incident that happened to them, our government's obligation is to respond in a fulsome, transparent, and immediate way. We will change our policies and procedures to make sure that a victim who reaches out shouldn't have to file a FOIA request, should just get the information that they seek. Of course, there still is the issue about sanctions. The city originally said it was going after Anjanette Young and her attorney to punish them over the video's release. Then Mayor Lightfoot yesterday said that's not happening, which is true in part. Late yesterday, city lawyers amended their court filing, clarifying that they are not seeking to sanction Young personally. They are still seeking to sanction her attorney, though. A hearing on that is scheduled for Tuesday.